Your style is very recognizable, something true, in my opinion, for all the 25 masters that have contributed to the original Alpha Magic set. Do you think about your artistic path when you work on new art? Or do you take for granted that there must be some coherence in it, since it's always you behind the brush? I just sort of take for granted that I draw things and paint things the way I, I see them. Not, I don't try to make a style that reflects off other artists or that would work as part of a whole. Yes. Um, I just, um, you know, I, I like to paint very bold figures with very bright colors. Um, I feel like I wanna to try to tell a little bit of a story. So I have the characters, you know, I work on the expressions, I work on the costuming, just to make sure that it's, uh, you know, that there's a recognizability to what this character is, who they are, what world they're in. And uh, I, I didn't think about, you know, the other artists. I just painted, you know, as I, as I saw, like the Sarah Angel or the Demonic yes. Tutor, um, just the way I would want it to be presented. Yes. Um, I, in the early days of magic, we were told to uh, paint very simple. We were told the pictures were going to be about the size of a postage stamp. Yeah, yeah. And so they said, keep it really simple, do very little background, um, make the colors very bright because they're going to be very tiny. And so I didn't do very much detail past the character. I, I would just paint the individual, you know, like a demonic tutor. He, yeah. You know, there's a little bit of a volcano behind him, but that's all. Recently, I asked the same question to the photographer John Divola, and he replied in a similar way. When he works on something new, he's focused on what he's doing, and probably that is enough. That is already the link. I think that with your style of drawing could be the same. I don't even see a style. You yeah, know, when exactly. I paint angel, demon, force of nature, prodigal sorcerer, I didn't even see a style. I just I just did the art. Yes. And and I've been told that people can recognize it. <laughs> I don't see it. I just you know, I just draw what I draw. <laughs> Sometimes it's the same in music. Even if an artist experiments in different ways and doesn't think about having a style, often its public doesn't recognize one. Do you have visual references for your work? I was very inspired by um, a lot of the 70s pop artists like um, Boris Vallejo, Frank Frazetta, uh, Michael Whelan. These are some of my biggest influences, and I have stacks and stacks of books with their art in it. Of course, you can find it all on the internet now. Yeah. Um, but I used to collect their art books, and I'd look at them with a magnifying glass and study. Ah, okay how did they paint this and shade that? And how did they do metal and hair and leather and uh, stone? And how do they handle all the different te techniques? And I think a lot of that has worked its way into my style because those artists are known for being, you know, very bold and particularly Boris Vallejo, who's a, a favorite of mine. Um, nice. And so I'm, I'm positive I got influence from that. And I know you have a collection of Warhammer figures. I have been playing Warhammer for 30 years. Yeah, nice. And uh, I mean, I love it. I, I don't know if you can see. I have a whole table over here for painting figures and all my paints. Wow, nice. And uh, this, yeah, in the other room, I've got shelves and shelves of display cases that I just display all my stuff on. Is it part of your work? Just a hobby for me. Um, I try to make my figures as good as I can, and I do show them sometimes. Um, I've never done a paid commission or anything like that, though. Okay. Um, I would love to. In fact, I'd love to do art for Games Workshop. Uh, nice. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> fanatic about Warhammer. You told me they ask you to paint easy to read images. So how did you approach the details of the composition? Some of my later pieces, I did start working in uh, more background because I started to think that maybe the background can help tell the story of the character. Yes. Um, for example, they had me do a, a, the Northern Paladin. Yes, yes. And then in Mirage, I did the Southern Paladin. And behind the Southern Paladin, because we were told it was a Southern island or a Southern environment, I started working in palm trees and mountain ranges and putting him in an environment because I thought that could help tell the character's story a little bit. 
also the printing process got better. Ah, yeah. And so it was easier for us to have more detail and not look, not look muddy. Um, and then finally, they wanted us to paint bigger. The first paintings were just five by seven. Yes. The later paintings became 11 by 14. Yes. And it was a lot easier to paint more detail because we had more, more canvas space. Yeah. This is interesting. It's similar to what happened in music. Even if the tools are the same, you can have more and more detail in that same space. I, I did a version of Sarah Angel for K Sera Sera, yeah. and I painted the painting. It's 20, it's, it was either 24 or 30 inches tall. It's really, really tall. And I could get in there and do every hair. You know, wow. I was doing every, every hair strand. And so because it was just a bigger canvas, we could do a lot more with it. Nice. Now, digitally, you can do anything you want. In my field, the debate between analog and digital is still very present. What was your opinion of digital painting when it started taking over your field? I know a lot of enthusiasts in the Magic the Gathering community are still skeptic. This is easy. Um, yeah. I embraced it right off. I've been using nice. Photoshop for almost 25, 27 years. And I love digital art. There are so many advantages to it. Yeah. I can save, I can erase, I can make <laughs> fixes, I can delete the whole file and start over. So many advantages. The only problem is if I do artwork now digitally, then I don't have an original painting. Yes. And the original painting is, is going to live forever. Well, it's going to live past my lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really nice to be able to have an original painting. And that's something I can't do digitally. Yes. Um, but my control over my imagery is so much stronger with digital. Yes, yes. You know, you can fix every little mistake. You can redo every little thing. Like you must know from music where if you don't like the way something sounds, you just yes. change it on the spot. Um, and with a digital painting, if you send it off to the art director and he wants, you know, a little more light or a little change, you can do that in 10 minutes and send yeah. it back. <laughs> Yes, a painting, yes. you'd almost have to start over. Yes. No, I so, uh, so for process, I prefer digital. But for the legacy, I think I should do things traditionally. So I still do both. Yeah, yeah. I, I still do some art digitally and some art I will still do traditional. Yeah, I think the key is probably not being a purist about it. But still, I often think that if you, what you really want is the sound of an acoustic guitar, it is best to go for the real thing, because our ear is very precise, actually. Photoshop, it's getting better and better at looking like a painting, but it's still not quite perfect. What's your approach to commissioned work? Is it difficult for you to adjust your style to a client's request? I want as much detail as they can give me. Okay. Um, you know, if they want a character in a certain color or a certain hat or, you know, to have magic rings or any little detail, that helps because then I know I'm delivering the image that Watsi is looking for. Um, I'm, not, I'm not one of these people that think, oh, I'm, I know everything, I'm perfect. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I want all the detail from the art director. Um, and I'll do multiple sketches. I'll draw several different versions and let them pick which one they want, uh, just to make sure that the customer is getting the image that they want. Okay. Um, you know, when I did the cover for you, the more detail you gave me, the more I knew you were getting an image that you would be happy with. With me, it was maybe a bit more crazy. I got to know your art when I was playing magic every week with my friends. And that imaginary has always been a big influence for me. So I wanted to reference to those artworks, but at the same time, I wanted to see what could happen. You had good ideas to get me started. Like you wanted yes, the chess yes. pieces, you wanted the eggs, yes, the yes. volcano, um, you know, the punk character with the book. Yes, like, yes. Okay, yes. I, I can do this. I can do this. That's, that's some creative stuff. In fact, I was wondering how much of what you do is commissions and how much work goes on your own projects. Most of it is commissions. I still get maybe a dozen pieces of fan mail a week. It still comes in. People wanting autographs, people with questions. Um, and I get commissions. I get three or four commissions every week. 
Nice. Uh, to do card alters. Yes. yes. To do play mats, custom play mats. Um, so I'm very, very, very busy. I probably spend 20 to 25 hours a week doing just commissions. Yeah. <laughs> and then I do my own art. Yes. And then I do, I have a day job and then I do Warhammer. So I'm very, very busy. <laughs> Does it bother you in any way that a lot of recasts are for artworks you did many years ago? Do you feel like you are condemned to be known forever for those iconic artworks? I am. I did that artwork half my life ago. Yes. Um, you know, tw almost 30 years ago. And I am much better now as an artist. <laughs> um, I'm faster. I'm more confident. You know, I've kind of figured out what my art looks like. I'm, but everybody will always know me from, from magic. And the way I think about it is it's like Star Trek to me. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows William Shatner as Captain Kirk. Yeah, yeah. And he's done a lot of stuff since, but he will always be Captain Kirk. <laughs> and Leonard Nimoy will always be Mr. Spock. And so I feel like I will always be the artist that did the Sarah Angel. Yes. So I, I am at peace with that. I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, I do, I still do commissions of her. I still draw, you know, Sarah Angels on cards and, and I paint little pictures of them. I mean, I just, I'm constantly drawing Sarah Angels and demonic tutors and prodigal sorcerers and force yeah. of natures, icy manipulator, <laughs> always. And, yeah. and I'm okay with it um, because magic has done so much for me. It has made me, it has put me on the map of artists. Yes. And it's something that I carry with me. It's very special and unique. And I'm the only one that can say I drew the original Sarah Angel. So yeah. it's, it's done a, a lot of things for my career. It's done a lot of things for my outreach to, to people and community. I can go to conventions and, you know, I have a place there. Um, and so I have to remember all the good can, that came from it. Yes. And, and it's, it's, been, it's been very good. Wizards of the Coast has done a lot for me. But I get that it can be frustrating when you feel like they are not the best thing you have done and you would like more attention or your new stuff. For a long time, it was very difficult because I kept getting better, but I kept seeing the same first cards, you know, the same Sarah Angel and Prodigal Sorcerer. And I kept seeing, and I'm like, guys, I've gotten better. Look at this new <laughs> stuff. Um, it took a while to get used to. Um, but again, I am, at, I am comfortable with it. I'm at peace with it now had some people tell me that they got into art school or they started into art because of copying my images if the art was that it had that sort of impact that's a good thing what are you looking for in an art piece what catches your attention to the point that you think wow this is it it's more about the technical side or the feeling you get from it the electronic music pioneer yannick senakis used to say that make music means to express human intelligence by sonic means. This intelligence in its broadest sense, which includes not only the peregrination of pure logic, but also the logic of emotion and intuition. For me recently, it's been when somebody uses the light, like uh, painting with light. Like you can have a figure in the front ground and a figure in the background, and have this beam of light that comes through that just makes everything have an atmosphere. That really catches my eye. You know, maybe it's just the side light on a figure, or maybe it's the depth of field between, you know, what's close and what's far, and all the layers of mountains or, or trees or architecture. It's when somebody uses the light in a very interesting way that just brings the whole piece alive. So the simplest piece. If, if it's got, if they've painted with wonderful lighting, that will catch me. Sometimes it's just the color. Sometimes it's just atmosphere or a light beam. Uh, having that light just fills the space for me and makes me feel momentarily like there, there's, an, there's a connection there. It's like, I, I have to be in that world. <laughs> nice. And so I, I, I pay attention to the lighting quite a bit. I'm not very good at using it myself, <laughs> or at least I try, I push to do that better. Um, but if I see something with just elaborate lighting, I just go crazy. <laughs>